And so they're really thinking that part of the reason we have such an epidemic of type 2 diabetes in this country right now is the amount of high fructose corn syrup that we're using in things. And that's because corn is a subsidized crop and they had all this corn and they found out that they could make a really cheap sweetener and then the food industry decided that, wow, that's, that's a lot cheaper than using cane sugar, so we're going to start using that. And, and that coincided with the increase in calories, the increases in size of portions, and the increased risk of di type 2 diabetes in our country. White bread, white rice, so all of those things, white potato, those are high on the glycemic index, which means they change from, from food to sugar really quickly. So you always want to try and stick on the low side, um, which are unsweetened yogurt, nuts, nuts and beans, and some fruits. There are lots of fruits that have a lot of fiber in them, so they're not, they don't change to sugar as quickly. Bananas are probably the one fruit that is high on the glycemic index. So everybody thinks about bananas because of the potassium. You hear, oh, it's so great for your potassium. But bananas turn right into sugar. So it's much better if you need the potassium to eat an orange, which is high in potassium, than a banana. And energy is measured in calories. That's more or less the currency of the body. Um, calories are how we burn our food. Um, and in certain times of, of stress and in times of starvation, the body will store food for future use. So if you're not using the calorie immediately, if you're not taking that calorie and going out and riding your bike, the body's going to store it for future use because this is a survival technique. Now, if you think about the fact that you're eating dinner maybe seven or eight o'clock at night and then if you're one of those people that get up in the morning and skip breakfast and go all the way maybe till one or two in the afternoon before you actually eat anything all that time from the time of seven o'clock the night before till two o'clock the next day well starting in the morning the body starts going wow there's no food wow there's no food wow this must be a famine we better store every single drop of energy we can because it must be a famine. And so by skipping breakfast on a routine basis, you're actually training your body to hang on to all of that and store it as much as possible. Whereas if you're eating on a regular basis and, you're, and you get up and you have breakfast at pretty much the same time every day, your body gets into the cycle of, oh, okay, food's plentiful, food's here, I don't have to be so concerned about storing food because the next meal is only a couple hours away. And so that's another reason why you want to make sure that you don't skip breakfast. So typically women will need um, somewhere between 1,800 and 2,000 calories a day. Um, do I have another slide for men? I guess. Um, of course, men will be able to use more, and that's mainly because of muscle. Muscle is your biologically, metabolically active tissue. Your muscle burns more calories than any other kind of tissue in your body. So men naturally have more muscle, um, mainly because of their male hormones, and so they get to burn more calories in a day. Now, one of the problems of rapid weight loss or using some kind of weight a uh, reduction program that makes you lose weight quickly is oftentimes you'll start to lose muscle instead of fat. Now if you're losing muscle you're actually working against yourself because you're actually losing your metabolically active tissue which means if you continue to lose muscle your basal metabolic rate is going to go down which means you're going to have to eat less and then you're still losing muscle and you're going to have to eat even less and at some point your body said Losing muscle, this is not good. We need to stop this. And your body will stop it, and then you'll have a rebound weight gain. And so the best way to lose weight is slow and steady, you know, like a pound a week. Make sure that you're eating lots of proteins to support muscle development. Make sure you're exercising and doing some weight-bearing exercise to build those muscles, build that metabolically active tissue um, so that you can continue to have a healthy, balanced weight. The other strategy is to really 
plan your menus. This is tough for most of us because most of us are stressed out and we're kind of eating on the fly and we're thinking about what we're eating as we're driving home, going to Fred Meyer's on the way home. Um, but if you really want to be serious about having a healthy diet, you really need to plan ahead. You need to start thinking about what your week's going to be like, especially if you work you know, outside the home and you're going to have to bring your food with you or if you're traveling, you really need to think about, okay, what do I need? Sit down on the weekend and think about what your meals are going to be and what you're going to need when you go shopping. It also helps to have a good idea of what you need when you go shopping so that you don't just wander around and buy the wrong things. Remember to include snacks, healthy snacks. Um, like nuts, like cut up vegetables, um, and, and try never to go in shopping when you're hungry because you just have no willpower. You'll end up with, oh, there's a sale on that. <laughs> you know, oh, the, uh, you know, the boxed macaroni dinners, that's on sale for a dollar. Oh, gee, okay, I'll get that. And then someday when you're home and you're standing there looking in your pantry or standing there looking in your refrigerator going, what am I going to eat tonight? there'll be those things that you bought at a weak moment which then you'll make and eat in a weak moment. So the whole idea is to plan ahead and know what your diet is going to be like. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Um, protein within an hour of rising. A lot of people that don't regularly eat breakfast say they can't eat breakfast in the morning. They're not hungry. Again, if you, you're routinely skipping breakfast, your body's going to wake up and say, well, I'm not even going to bother telling him he's hungry because they're going to ignore me anyway. And so you get to the point where even your digestive system doesn't really get woken up until lunchtime. And so a lot of people get to the point where they literally have a hard time even eating in the morning. They get nauseous if they eat in the morning because it's such a habit that they're out of. And so the first thing to try and break that habit is to go to using a protein drink in the morning. And if you have to do that first and then wait an hour, an hour and a half, and then have your breakfast, that's another way of kind of improving that. Um, the chiropractor that I work with downtown at my practice, uh, he does a lot of work with elite athletes. And he really believes that you should have 50% of your protein for the day at breakfast. Most of the time, people will say you need about 75 grams of protein in a day. So 50%, that's quite a bit. That's like 30 grams of protein for breakfast. And he, when he has people that are using their bodies and in, in an elite athlete, come away, even just you know working out a lot, he finds that it, you really need to do half your protein at breakfast. Um, one thing you can do is, is switch your breakfast with your dinner if you have leftover dinner you can have dinner for breakfast. Um, another thing is eggs. Two eggs equals one serving of protein. Now, I know that a lot of people have heard how eggs are bad for their cholesterol. Well, it's really interesting, but organic eggs are very different than commercial eggs. Turns out that organic eggs have a one-to-one -one ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 oils which are the good kinds of fats. Commercial eggs have a 20 to 1 ratio of omega-6 to omega-3. So 1 to 1 versus 20 to 1. And the omega-6 oils are the ones that if you have too much of that, that can go over and go down the pathway to inflammation. Another thing that's interesting about organic eggs is that the yolks contain a high amount of lecithin. And lecithin helps you process cholesterol. And the real story about cholesterol is your liver can make more cholesterol in a day than you could ever possibly eat. So even though they talk about watching the cholesterol intake in your diet, it really is, if you have high cholesterol, more than likely it's more an issue of why is your liver making cholesterol. Remember, high insulin, store stuff, how you store energy, you store it as cholesterol, you store it as triglycerides, triglycerides become cholesterol. So again, we get back to the insulin story, that's the real reason you have high cholesterol, not the fact that you're eating the cholesterol. It's probably that you're eating way too much carbs. Carbs are causing you to release insulin. Insulin is causing you to make cholesterol. <laughs>